Okay, I managed to uh, slice my finger open on this grumpy old machine. Decided to send the other one back and just found this on eBay. Happened to be going past uh, where it was and thought, well, seeing as it was a little over a quarter of the price of the other one, I might as well get this and actually have a bit left over to do it up and get some nice cobalt drill bits. Um, it's roughly the same size, um, although it's obviously seen some unusual behaviour. Someone's actually tried to uh, spot weld the handles on and also tap these sections here and it's still wobbly so I think I'm going to end up taking those out and cleaning that up and probably just using a bit of Araldite. So the motor on this is 350 uh, watts as opposed to 500 and I'm just going to turn it on. It's still quite noisy but it's not as loud as the other one and the main thing is um, I'm not feeling that vibration in the handles as I was with the previous one. That was a bit annoying. Um, anyway like I said this was a little over a quarter of the price of the previous one so I'm going to start by just taking it apart. Uh, it's got a few potholes on the top uh, not as many as some old drills. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to find another cast iron top. Um, so I'm just going to have to live with it. And as with all second hand machine tools, there's always something that looks like bird shit on it. There you go. God knows what that is. Probably some sort of remnants of a spider's egg pouch. So I'm going to put all the little screws and stuff. I took the machine apart before realising I hadn't checked the runner on the chuck, but I'd rather not know if I've made this drill worse. I'm more concerned with comparing it with the drill I sent back in the previous video. Try some painters to see if that gets some of this stuff off. Weird kind of resinous stuff. bit of uh, butcher's block oil with some white spirit. Uh, I think some people refer to it as mineral oil and mineral spirit. Okay, I've already taken this pulley off here, this is the jockey pulley, and the piece of metal that it sits on. I've noticed that the bearings are exposed on the inside so I'm going to push this out and get a new bearing these do feel a bit knackered um, no, that doesn't feel perfectly straight I'm sure there's a bit of wobble on that Uh, 
actually sprayed that the other night, so it's had a day and a half uh, to soak in. Uh, this is a broken um, calipers that I used to undo this particular type of uh, nut, which I'm not exactly sure what it's called. So this little peg here was stopping the spring coming out. I'm just taking off this uh, clip with two long nose pliers and brute force. I've actually got a circlip um, or e clip uh, pliers set coming in the post. You can see these ones are also exposed. Um, so I won't be using these. So that one is quite rattly. That's the one I've just taken out. If I rotate this around in, this, in the light, it didn't really bore the hole perfectly center. I just spread two of the bearings um, with a bit of WD-40, and it's actually made them a little bit noisy. I think it's reacted or done something to the grease that's inside them, somehow found its way in. I mean, this one, I can feel it kind of vibrating when I'm turning it. It doesn't sound too bad, but this feels better, but something feels loose in there. Again, it's open bearing. I can feel like a lot of crap must have got in there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is take back some of the uh, burrs from the casting. Um, I, think, I think I'm going to do now is just take the fan guard off and just clean it up, bash it into shape. Uh, you can really see into into that. It's quite scary, but I guess that keeps really cool. So that's out by 0 0.02 millimeters. That's pretty good. I've just put the pulley on the motor and now I'm just checking how well it runs, how true it runs. It's about 0 0.2 of a mil off. 
Okay, I've just tied it up a little bit. I've placed the the spring and the housing in a bit of white spirit just to clean off the uh, grease that was inside. You can see, so if I can clean that up, I can then apply some new lithium grease. It's interesting, you can see they've um, punched the nut in four spots there, assumed to kind of pull the thread out a little bit so that it pinches onto the um, onto the thread. You can feel that just catches a little bit more once it gets past that point. Okay, I'm going to replace these glands which fit along here with these IP rated ones which I've got three here I just need to make this hole ever so slightly bigger I couldn't find an appropriate replacement switch so I decided to use some of the spare buttons I collected during my CNC controller build and make a new panel. However, I'm going to keep the original relay switch and internal electronics. You want to make sure you select the correct wire gauge for the amps drawn by your machine. Oh, that is really on the piss. I'm now going to remove this handle sleeve, I think it's called, from the uh, rack. And I think it's done by undoing this pin here. Okay, I've just taken all the handles off the handle block. I know people get annoyed um, by the handles of pillar drills coming off, but this is a little bit of a stupid way of kind of doing it. I think a bit of Aerodite or Loctite in there would be fine. Uh, alternatively, could have just extended the thread, added a nut, and when that was in, just lock it down with the, the other nut. Anyway, I don't want to buy more of these. I think I could probably just get the bar and re-thread it, but um, I think for now I'm going to 
cut this section off and re-tap it. I tried to re-tap the original handle but quickly realised the remainder of the shaft was a smaller diameter. The thread must have been press moulded onto the bar so there's no way of extending the thread. Okay, I managed to get a replacement for this. What was meant to be the replacement of this section here looks really different. The Beep. Camps, the hole is slightly bigger. I'm going to have to stick with the original parts now and just try and do them up as best as I can. After fitting those back together, I began installing the bearings. Just warmed that up on the, in the microwave uh, using Mr. AVE's method of swaddling the bearing uh, in a wet paper towel. Sounds nice and quiet. Just swapped out the end crimps with these through ones. This is going to go to the switch mechanism, but then I'm also going to attach this uh, LED driver that will sit around the back here and hopefully power this IKEA light. So that's the one millimeter pitch. I tapped the first hole a bit badly and then realized I couldn't fit a nut behind it as it was too close to a flange within the cast iron head. So I decided to put a switch there instead and drill a new hole a little further above that. I wired it to the wrong one. <laughs> made a uh, nut, I'm 
which goes on the inside and locks that in place. That turns on and then and the light stays on. I'm now going to cut and tap the metal rods which happen to be legs from a floor tom drum. Put some grease in this. I'm now measuring up the top of the drill so I can cut a piece of neoprene rubber to fit between the cast iron body and the pulley guard. This should dramatically help reduce the noise of the machine. I was a little off with some of the holes so I used this handheld belt punch to nibble away at the neoprene to reveal the tapped holes underneath. I probably should have wired a trip switch to the enclosure lid but I didn't so I have to be extra careful if I ever need to change the belt and to remember to isolate the power from the machine. I also use the engineer straight edge to line all the pulleys up. The light is a little bit hotter than I'd like but I've left it on for about four hours and it hasn't spontaneously caught on fire. I've also just fixed the back of my dial gauge which uh, broke. Now I'm going to check the Morse taper again. It's about 0 0.02, maybe 0 0.03 of a mil. It's very similar to what the uh, model that I returned uh, had. Okay, I've managed to set it so it's about 0.25 mil uh, deflection. Um, I mean, it really is just about hitting the chuck as hard as you can with a soft mallet so that it seats 
properly into the into the morse taper. The last thing I did was tram the bed using a dial gauge clamped to an arm across the chuck and with a hammer to adjust the tilt. Okay, I've got it. Got it to about 0 0.05 of a mil. Okay, um, the last thing I did was place a few magnets along the top at the front of the drill where I could place my bits at easy reach. Um, I'm quite happy with this. At the moment the base is a little bit wobbly um, so I need to prop that up on something or maybe think of a, making another thing. This is quite wide and I don't really have enough space in this corner. Okay, that's the bench drill restoration video. I'm quite happy with this despite ordering some replacement parts which turned out to be for a more recent model that I couldn't send back. But restoring an old drill has worked out substantially cheaper and more enjoyable than buying a similar drill brand new. However, I don't have a warranty with this. But then again, I am the warranty. As usual, don't forget to sacrifice the thumb to the algorithm gods and let me know what you thought in the description below. Thanks again.